geometric shape that represents an area. For example, this polygon represents Tagaytay City. And each polygon has different attributes. For example, market class. So this is the classification of the municipality based on their revenue. Also, the leading brand. They also indicate that whether the sponsor or the competitor is the leading brand on that polygon. We also have the internet APIs, like the download speed, um, the signal strength, and also the addressable market or the potential customers for our sponsors. And lastly, we also have the number of subscribers. However, our sponsors specifically ask for external data sets. This is to provide them with new insights. So one um, valuable external data set that we found is the cities and municipalities competitiveness index or the CFCI data provided by the DPI. So CFCI provided scores for different indicators and five major pillars for each 1,633 municipalities in the Philippines. So these five major pillars are economic dynamism, government efficiency, infrastructure, resiliency, and innovation. And the scoring here is better scored from 0 to 20. The closer you are to 20, that means that you are more competitive on that pillar. Okay? However, the problem here is that this data set is not readily available as an Excel file or a CSV file. And also, since this is a huge data set, they were divided into several web pages and different categories. So getting them manually will be time consuming for our team. So our solution, web scraping. With the help of our um, mentor, we were able to web scrape this huge data set using Python, Beautiful Soup, Panda, and Request. In addition to our CMCI data, we also use the barangay identification provided by the PSA. So they um, indicate whether the barangay is a rural or an urban place. And also to have more knowledge or to have more data about the, each polygon, we also thought that what if we get the facilities where we think there will be a high traffic of people or we require good signals such as schools, hospitals, right? So using the data points from Humanitarian Data Exchange, which is managed by the United Nations, we then integrated these data points to the polygon file provided by our sponsors. Now, using QGIS, an open source software mapping tool, we get the number of these facilities. And just to make sure that our data is accurate, we also use Appify Web Scraper to um, validate or to um, Yes, to validate whether these data points really exist. So with these three um, softwares and tools that we use, we were able to get the number of airports, seaports, health services, educational places, major malls, and financial services for each polygon. So to know more about our external and internal data set, Janelle will explain it through exploratory data analysis. All right, hello everyone, my name is Janelle and I'm here to give an insight, initial insights of our data. So to start with, we have an overview of our polygons given by our sponsor. So we have a total of almost 3,000 plus polygons, and we can see, and this was grouped by the regions as defined by the sponsor, so we could see that the Visayas and Mindanao regions compromise most of the polygons, and the NCR and Palawan region contain the least number of polygons. Next, our data set also includes geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas. Now what are these? According to DSWD, these are areas that are physically and socioeconomically isolated from the rest of mainstream society. So overall, 59% of our polygons contain GIDAs. Next, this is also the distribution of our polygons per region and per market class. Now for our market class, it ranges from the key cities up to the fourth to sixth class municipalities. Now an example of our key city is Makati City, which is highly urbanized and highly populated. And our, an example of our fourth to sixth class municipality is Gasan Marinduque, which is a fourth class municipality. So from our distribution, most of the polygons in Luzon are first class municipalities, 
Next, the NCR and Malawan region contain most of the key cities, and for the Visayas and Mindanao region, they contain most of our four to six class municipalities. We also determined the price plan or what do the cost do the, the subscribers usually buy per region. So over here, we have our number of households, and over here, we have our price plans starting from the lowest to the highest. So for each region, for the Luzon and Visayas and Mindanao regions, most of the price plans available is the lowest, the 1 to 174 pesos. And for the NCR and Palawan regions, they usually avail the second highest price plan. Next, we also looked at the mobile characteristics of our polygons and aggregated it by province. So over here, our mobile download speed for the sponsor, it leads in only 58% of our polygons. And for our mobile signal strength, it's a lot lower. The sponsor leads in only 14% of the polygons. Next, for our broadband characteristics, the broadband download speed for the sponsor leads in 54% of the polygons. Meanwhile, the same trend, a lower broadband signal strength, uh, the sponsor leads in only 14% 40% of these polygons. So also, we, we check the, uh, the behavior of our subscribers over a certain region of the map. So over here on the left, we could see the number of subscribers leaving our sponsor, and on the right, we could see the number of subscribers that are joining the competitor. So over here, the darker the color is, the higher those numbers are. And as we can see from the trend here, most of the polygons with a high churn or the number of subscribers leaving are also, most of them are the same as the polygons with a higher number of subscribers, new subscribers joining the competitor. So based on our data, we used random forest classifier to determine the top six feature importances that we could use for our clustering. So highlighted over here, in the economy, internet, employment, population density, which we gathered from our external data, and the market marketable household and the addressable market, which we gathered from the internal data. So, and that's it for me. So for our clustering, we call on Mikaela. Hello everyone, I'm Mika. Hello everyone, I'm Mika, and I will be discussing the clustering and the profiling. So to be able to identify the location groupings, uh, clustering was chosen uh, over the other machine learning techniques because this allows us to uncover the natural groupings within the data. We also use in our analysis the Keynes clustering and Davis Walden index to determine the optimal number of the groupings. And from this, we were able to come up with four clusters or groupings. And the following are the distribution. For the cluster zero, we got an 886 number of polygons. For cluster one, 1,082 number of polygons. For cluster two, we got 696 number of polygons. And for cluster three, we got 465 number of polygons. And to uh, over, give us an overview of the indicators uh, used also from the feature selection process. For cluster zero, this got the lowest indicator scores and the lowest total potential customers. For cluster one, it got moderate indicator scores and a high number of potential customers. For cluster two, we got high and strong number of indicators and a moderate number of addressable market uh, reflecting a more balanced mix of rural and urban features. And for cluster three, that got the highest economic score, internet capability, and employment indicator, as well as a high number of total addressable market. Furthermore, cluster zero are the growing communities got the total potential customers at 4 million. It's mostly rural municipalities 
and 33% are four to six class municipalities. It also got a 67% of GIDA. And for cluster one, which are the strategic investments or the highly populated urban centers, this got a large number of potential customers, which is at 36 million. It's mostly rural and a mix of first class and second to third class municipalities. For cluster two are the balanced developments. This got a five million total potential customers and a mix of four to six class municipalities and first class municipalities. And for the cluster three, which are the top market zones and highly developed areas, this got a total 38 million of total potential customers and 33% are key cities. And to discuss further our recommendation and insight, I'd like to call on Anne. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, I'm Anne. So in order for our sponsors to know the focus on where they should increase their presence, brand presence, we have came up with these recommendations. First, with cluster three, the top market zones. The highest scorers for the economic indica indicators. When it comes to the category of the polygon share lead for broadband, we observe that our sponsors led 80% of the polygons in this cluster. However, for our recommendation, we would like to focus on these 20% that are led by our competitors. Okay, so our sponsors may invest in a grading internet to accommodate the 6 million additional customers in this particular polygon. Okay, we also recommend that our sponsors promote services price range from 2,001 pesos to 2,899 pesos to these polygons because these services are the most available for the 80% of the polygon. One one example of the polygon under this 20% is Laguna Binyan South Wood Red. Next recommendation, still in factor 3 but with different category, which is for polygon Facebook share and share. We observe that our sponsor has greater churn share compared to our competitors with the 70% of the polygons in this cluster. So as a recommendation, our cluster, our um, sponsors may upgrade infrastructures in the 760 polygons with higher churn rates compared to the competitors. But why are we recommending that? Based on the data, the sponsor mobile signal strength for this cluster is weaker and lesser than the competitors. Okay. Next. For cluster 2, the balance development. For the balanced development cluster two. Okay, so this cluster has the highest average of internet capability. Our recommendation for our sponsors is that to improve overall network infrastructure and signal strength. For our group, we actually recommend our sponsors to do the first network rollout in this cluster since we need to maximize the highest average of internet capability in these areas. Okay, next. Cluster 1, strategic investments. We also observe that our sponsors led about 66% of these polygons when it comes to our broadband. But for our recommendation, we will be focusing on this 34% polygon. Sponsor, or our sponsors may invest in a grading internet to accommodate about 14 million additional potential customers in these areas. Okay, And our sponsors may promote services priced from 3,000 pesos to 989 pesos because these are the most available in this area. We also recommend our sponsors to make partnerships with local businesses, real estate developers, or community organizations, since we discovered that a lot, a lot of polygons are actually um, building some township programs. 
asking. So we can also do it. And let her throw out for this semester. And last, for chapter zero, the growing communities. These are the polygons with the lowest score for economic indicators. So our recommendation for our sponsors are enhance existing infrastructure to the 320 polygons led by the competitor in this cluster. Introduce more affordable pricing plans and special discounts. But of course, these won't be successful if our market is not um, aware enough of the products and services. Therefore, our sponsors may organize community engagement activities, especially to reach the 99.8% rural residents of these factor. Before ending the recommendation, I would like to highlight what we said for the third cluster a while ago. We have a 6 million potential customers for that cluster. And our recommendation is for you to be able to sell or promote services ranges 2,001 to 2,800 So given all those, let's say for example, um, the improvement of signal strength is successful. Then the promotion of those services is also successful. Given all those, the additional sales that our sponsors may have is amounting to 12 billion pesos. Okay, thank you very much. I hope that you were able to understand our project for today. Yeah, I guess everybody will talk as well. Okay, so today we covered a lot of grounds, most especially in gathering the data. We used the external and internal data coming from our sponsor. Also, we did um, web scraping for, uh, for granularity. We had, uh, we cleaned the data, we had an EDA for us to understand the data. Of course, we also had clustering. We used Amy's cluster to group the locations for, uh, for us to understand the different needs of the different geographical areas in the Philippines. Another is that we profiled them, okay? So this study will not be possible, of course, without my teammates. Again, we are pinpoint together with me. I have your Cherish Ivy Fabricante, Junior Data Analyst, Jinel Paat, Mining Engineer, Micaela Nicolas, Operations Analyst, and Marie Christine Pasqua, a former high school mathematics teacher, and of course, yours truly, Jinia Gonzalez, Jinia Gonzalez, a former research teacher. And also, we are privileged to be guided by our expert mentor, Mr. Mike O'Kane. So again, we are pinpoint knowledgeable in geographic or geospatial analytics. I hope that through learning our study, you will be able to know the importance of location in decision making. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I just want to point out something for the crowd a little bit of uh, um, uh, 